hi there welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you how i do my jerk chicken sandwich so this is going to be a jerk marinated chicken on a grill pan and we're going to be doing the cocoa bread the coleslaw and a delicious sauce to bring it all together so stick around if you want to see how i get this done So the first thing we want to get started on is the coleslaw because we want to put it in the fridge to chill. So I'm using about half pound of cabbage and I'm just shredding it. So there's different ways you can do this of course. I have a coleslaw video up. You can either cut it with a knife like that, you can use a grater or you could even use a vegetable peeler this way. And um, there, there's numerous ways. So what we're trying to do is just get a fine uh, shred on the cabbage. You could also do it like this. You could get, um, well, it wouldn't be one leaf. It would be several. I'm just showing you this technique. So you would fold it and then um, cut it in strips. That's another way. Alright, so of course we're going to be adding carrot as well. I use that side more often, sometimes that side, but mostly this side. So that will be shredded. Whenever I'm doing coleslaw, I like to make the dressing first and then add the vegetables. Because if you add just add dry sugar to the cabbage and the carrot, you might leave some granules in there. So it's always best to make the dressing first and have that mixture ready. As far as the mayonnaise, you can add as much as you like. Just make sure there's a good balance between the sweet and the sour and the mayonnaise. So if you want it even creamier, you can add more mayo than I did, but then you might need to add a little more vinegar and sugar as well. So now we're done with the coleslaw, we're going to refrigerate that and move on to the cocoa bread. I will be using instant yeast 
so with instant yeast you can add it right to the flour you don't need to um, activate it with warm water and sugar Now I'm adding the softened butter so it's not melted, it's just softened and you're just going to use your fingers or a fork or a whisk to break up the butter into tiny pieces into the flour. So what we're doing now is making a well in the center of the dry ingredients and then we're going to be adding the liquids to the center. I am using brown sugar so I've dissolved it in the warm water. So after you add that, all you're going to be doing is just bringing those dry ingredients to the center, stirring it around, mixing everything together thoroughly to form your dough. So once the dough has come together, then you're going to be dusting your kitchen counter, whatever flat surface you have, with a little flour, and then you're going to be kneading the dough to make it much smoother.
once that's kneaded into a ball you're gonna just use some olive oil whatever oil you have brush the bowl and then you're gonna put the, the uh, dough inside and brush the top again just to prevent a crust from forming while it is resting because now we're gonna put the dough to rest um, in a dark warm area I'm gonna be using my oven the oven is off but because it's a dark area and I know yeast loves that kind of environment in order to grow I'm just gonna be using my oven so what you want is for your dough to almost double in size and then we're gonna punch it down gently this is just to get out those big air bubbles that are in there and then we're going to fold it into onto itself um, and then put it on our flat surface again to do a little kneading. After kneading the dough we're gonna be cutting it into about 10 to 12 pieces if you do 12 then you're gonna get um, some smaller cocoa breads and then if you do like um, eight then they're gonna be bigger so decide what you prefer and go ahead with that I did about 11 pieces I think two pieces were bigger than the others because I was testing something but between 10 and 12 pieces is definitely good. So the next step is you're going to be picking up each piece of dough and then you're going to fold them onto themselves like you're doing a dumpling. You're just not going to knead it as long as you would if you were making a dumpling. You're just trying to form a ball here. After you formed all the balls, you're going to let them rest for about a minute or two because you've been handling the dough and then we're going to be rolling them out. So you're really just rolling it out to get that shape for the cocoa bread. And then we're gonna be spreading some butter in the center. We're gonna be avoiding the edges and just spreading butter inside, in the, mostly the center.
Now at this point of rolling out the dough, some people actually use a bowl to cut out this part here to make it a perfect circle. If you like to do that, that is perfectly fine, but I'm not so concerned about it being a perfect circle. I just want it to be as round as possible. And then I'm gonna spread on the softened butter, not melted butter, softened butter. And you're gonna avoid the edges though. Alright, so once you've folded all your cocoa breads, you're going to put it on a lightly greased baking sheet and let it rest for about three minutes. After those three to four minutes, then you're going to put it in the oven. Usually it bakes between 20 and 25 minutes. You just want to look for a nice golden brown top. That's a good clue as to when it's done. And then you're gonna brush on some melted butter to make it really nice and shiny and even more delicious. Okay guys, so we're moving on to the chicken. I have one chicken breast here and I'm gonna butterfly the chicken breast. So what you're doing is just laying it flat and then cutting along the side slowly and steadily until it opens up. Kinda like you're doing butterfly shrimp if you've ever done that. So you're trying not to cut all the way through because you're trying to end up with a bigger, flatter piece of chicken breast.
Okay, so we're moving on to the sauce. I find that most of the West Indian restaurants I go to, they have some kind of um, red sauce. Some of them call it red sauce that they offer you to put on your chicken or your rice. So aside from like the regular curry gravy or oxtail gravy, and this red sauce, the base is usually ketchup and then they add a, a lot of other things to it. So I'm gonna be making my own sweet and spicy red sauce to go with this sandwich. Alright guys, moving on to cooking the chicken. So the chicken could be done in a pan or in the oven. Today I'm using a cast iron grill pan. Why? It, um, it retains heat because it's cast iron but it also has the grilling feature. So because I'm not going outside to use a grill, which you could do if you have one, I like to use this pan because it just gives the meat a good char so that feeling like you did it outside on the barbecue so we're gonna be using this pan and if you want to get those grill marks all you're gonna do is grill it and then give it like a 90 degree turn about 90 degree turn and then grill it again that's how you get that cross mark and then you flip it over and continue cooking it I tell you guys, I'm unable to do the jerk chicken the authentic way with the pimento wood. 
but this is such a convenient little pan especially if you live the condo or apartment life and you don't have the outdoor grill this really does wonders So I have to tell you guys, the chicken thighs are really good for this sandwich too. So if you can get a boneless thigh and grill it, that would be awesome. Or you can use the breast and then just make sure you don't overcook it. Let the chicken rest for at least a minute before you start cutting it. We're just going to be cutting it in some thick strips, but you could dice it if you want to. I'm just using some thick strips and then of course, we're going to open up the cocoa breads and stuff them with lettuce, coleslaw and the chicken. And of course, that delicious sauce, I just drizzled some on top. It is so good, the sweet and sour. Um, flavor of the coleslaw with the spicy, smoky, sweet um, sauce and then that savory chicken. It is so delicious guys. I can't wait for you to try this. Please let me know how you like the recipe once you get a chance to. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.